What do you have to say for yourself? Thank you very much. My name is Munenori Kawasaki. I'm from Japan. I'm Japanese. Throughout his major league tenure, Munenori Kawasaki became a fan favorite for his comedic antics both on and off the field. But there's a lot more to Kawasaki than just his fun personality. He was also quite a talented athlete, and you may be surprised at the journey it took him to develop such an upbeat persona. This is the story of Muninori Kawasaki. Muninori Kawasaki was born on June 3rd, 1981 in Kagoshima, Japan. His brother introduced him to baseball in elementary school and he joined a youth baseball club at a young age. Kawasaki was initially a right-handed batter, but in middle school he took notice of Ichiro Suzuki on television. Like Kawasaki, Ichiro was not a big guy. He was very thin and not particularly tall either. For a young Kawasaki, Ichiro became a huge inspiration. He always thought athletes had to be big, tall, and muscular, but Ichiro went against all of his preconceived notions and gave him hope that he too could make a career in baseball. In fact, he was so impressed with Ichiro that he learned to hit left-handed because he wanted to imitate Ichiro in every possible way. Kawasaki went on to attend Kagoshima Technical High School, and although he was unable to participate in the Koshien tournament, he showcased great contact hitting and elite speed, running a 5.9 second 50 meter dash. He originally planned to go to college before pursuing a professional career, but on November 19, 1999, Kawasaki was drafted by the Fukuoka Daiei Hawks in the fourth round of the MPB draft. He decided to sign with the Hawks and his professional baseball career was underway. However, he was filled with doubt at this point. At this time, Kawasaki said he was 10% excited but 90% worried about being able to make it with the pros. He continued to practice day in and day out, but he really didn't stand out from his bigger, stronger teammates and he was getting incredibly discouraged. And in February, just three months after being drafted, Kawasaki called his parents back home in Kagoshima and told them he wanted to quit baseball. He had lost all hope. But his parents quickly talked him out of it, telling him to keep trying and that with time, he would gain the confidence to compete again. Although Kawasaki still struggled to perform in camp, once the season came around he started to turn things around on the farm team. As he continued to do well in games, he gradually gained his confidence back and, in June, he called his parents once again and told them that he sees the light now and that he's finally ready. In 2002, Kawasaki continued to put up good numbers on the farm team, hitting 367 en route to the Western League batting title. After being called back up to the first team, he recorded his first career MPB hit on June 15th. He filled in for the injured Tadahito Iguchi at second base for over a month and posted a 616 OPS, including four doubles, three triples, and three stolen bases. Not great production, but not bad for a 21-year-old that was just about ready to quit baseball two years prior. Then in 2003, Kawasaki's opportunity finally came. The Hawks' third baseman at the time, Hiroki Kokobo, ruptured his knee during the preseason, creating an opening on the infield as Kawasaki started opening day at shortstop and ended up playing 133 games between short and third. As the Hawks' two-hole slap hitter, Kawasaki posted a 294, 352, 377 slash line with 30 stolen bases, contributing to a Hawks offense that is widely considered the greatest of all time, and winning a Japan Series title in the process. The following year, he battled through a mild shoulder injury and ended up playing in 133 games again, hitting 303, 359, 387 with 42 stolen bases. He also earned his first All-Star selection, won the Gold Glove Award at shortstop, led the league in steals, and was tied for the league lead in hits. He also started the so-called Kawasaki Project to donate a wheelchair for every stolen base he recorded. In 2005, he had a bit of a down year offensively, but still played stellar defense and was named to the 2006 World Baseball Classic roster for the Japanese national team. It was here where Kawasaki finally met his idol, Ichiro. By the time Kawasaki had made it in MPB, Ichiro was already breaking MLB records with the Seattle Mariners, so this was the first time Kawasaki even played on the same field as Ichiro, and he got the opportunity to be the starting shortstop for Team Japan. 
Kawasaki was so excited to meet Ichiro for the first time that he didn't even listen to his manager, a legend by the name of Sadaharu O, oh, instead just appreciating the moment of meeting his childhood idol. Now, to be fair, Sadaharu O oh was Kawasaki's manager on the Hawks, so they had met before. But it really proves just how much Ichiro meant to Kawasaki that he cared so much more about a fellow active player than the world record holder in home runs. In the early stages of the tournament, Kawasaki batted ninth, right behind Ichiro in the leadoff spot. But in the WBC final against Cuba, Kawasaki took over for Ichiro at leadoff while Ichiro moved to cleanup. And in the top of the ninth inning, with Japan leading 6-5, Ichiro drove in Kawasaki on a single for a crucial insurance run. It was a very impressive slide at home as Kawasaki managed to contort his body to avoid the tag while brushing home plate with his right hand as Japanese media dubbed the play the right hand of God in reference to Diego Maradona's notorious hand of God goal at the 1986 FIFA World Cup. It was like a dream come true for Kawasaki to score a run in one of the biggest games of his career courtesy of his childhood idol. Japan went on to win the game 10-6, securing the inaugural WBC title. It was later revealed that Kawasaki injured his elbow on the play, as he missed the first few weeks of the 2006 season, but you have to think that it was worth it for him. Kawasaki was reduced to under 100 games in both 2007 and 2008 due to various injuries, but put up fantastic numbers when he was on the field, including the best offensive campaign of his career in 2007, where he slashed 329, 381, 428 with 5.0 war in just 95 games. In 2009, Kawasaki once again joined forces with Ichiro on the Japanese national team, and although he was largely reduced to a bench role, Japan won its second consecutive title. From 2009 to 2011, Kawasaki put his injury problems well behind him as he only missed one game. His production at the plate did slow down a bit as he managed only a 696 OPS during this span, which is just below league average, but his phenomenal defensive prowess made up for it, as he averaged over 4 wins above replacement per season and helped the SoftBank Hawks to another Japan Series title in 2011. At the end of the year, he became a free agent and decided to go to Major League Baseball. But he wasn't looking to just sign with any major league team. He wanted to join forces with his idol Ichiro Suzuki in Seattle. And on January 5th, 2012, Kawasaki got his wish as he signed a minor league deal with the Mariners. Then he hit almost 400 in spring training and got his way onto the opening day roster. When Kawasaki informed Ichiro that he made the major league team, Ichiro replied, You've been trying so hard. You deserve it. And these words have stuck with Kawasaki forever. On April 7th, Kawasaki recorded his first Major League hit and RBI off Bartolo Colon in his second career MLB at bat. Although he hit just 192 with an OPS below 561 games during the 2012 season, he didn't commit a single error on the field at second or short and even became the team's emergency catcher. When Mariners manager Eric Wedge first asked him if he can play catcher, Kawasaki replied, no problem even joking that he can actually catch better than he can play shortstop. So the glass half empty approach to Kawasaki's first MLB season would be to say that his hitting was terrible. But the glass half full approach would be that he managed to stay on the roster despite his poor offensive production due to his defensive versatility and clubhouse presence. At the end of the 2012 season, Kawasaki became a free agent again and signed a minor league deal with the Toronto Blue Jays. He started the season in AAA Buffalo but got the call up to the Major League team in place of an injured Jose Reyes. In his first game on April 13th, he hit a sacrifice fly off James Shields to help the Blue Jays to a victory. Later that month, he faced off against his idol Ichiro on the Yankees and even doubled off his fellow countryman Hiroki Kuroda. His first big game though came on May 26th against the Baltimore Orioles, where Kawasaki went 3 for 5 with 3 RBIs including a walk-off double which led to this iconic post-game interview that won the hearts of so many fans. What do you have to say for yourself? Thank you very much. My name is Munenori Kawasaki. I'm from Japan. I'm Japanese. See, Kawasaki came to North America without a translator. He thought he could at least speak some basic English, but he was mistaken. 
Early on, he struggled to talk with fellow players and staff, which made it very difficult to communicate with medical personnel or to understand clubhouse meetings, and that was certainly a frustrating experience for him. And so he was doing this out of necessity. He dedicated himself to learning English through self-learning books and just hanging out with teammates, and soon enough, Kawasaki became comfortable enough with English to be able to understand his teammates and to give these interviews. He fully embraced the team clown persona, not afraid to be stereotyped or to be made fun of, and quickly became a fan favorite in not only Toronto but throughout all of MLB. However, not everyone was happy with his comedic antics. Back home in Japan, some traditionalist fans took to social media to blast him for disrespecting Japanese culture and for making a mockery of his nation. But the majority of fans loved Kawasaki for showing off his personality and always giving his best out on the field. On June 21st, he hit his first and only home run in the majors off Baltimore's Tommy Hunter, tying the game in the seventh and helping lead Toronto to a comeback victory. Jose Batista. Just a little bit. Better. It'll be, yeah. yeah. Encarnacion. <laughs> Who's best? Me. On August 21st, with the Blue Jays visiting the Yankees, Ichiro Suzuki stroked a single off R.A. Dickey into left field for his 4,000th career hit between MPB and MLB. As Kevin Pollard threw the ball back into the infield, it was Munenori Kawasaki at shortstop to receive it. After admiring and chasing his idol for his entire career, Kawasaki was now on the field with Ichiro's 4,000th hit in his hands. No matter how the rest of his career turned out, there is no doubt that Kawasaki made his dreams come true. He played in 96 games during the 2013 season and hit 229, 326, 308 with 7 stolen bases and solid defense at second and short, good for one war. In 2014, he started the year in the minors again but got the call after an injury to Miser Isteris. He spent the year up and down in the minors but hit 258, 327, 296 with the Blue Jays. He spent most of 2015 in AAA, getting just 23 games in the majors and became a free agent at season's end. During his three years in Toronto, Kawasaki played in 200 games, recorded 123 hits, and had his first son, making him a Canadian. He considered returning to Japan, but instead signed a minor league deal with the Chicago Cubs. He only played in 14 major league games, but hit 333, 462, 429 in that small sample size, and got himself a World Series ring, as the Cubs broke their century-long curse. He stayed with the Cubs until spring of 2017, when he was let go and went back to the Hawks in Japan. He battled an Achilles injury all year and only managed to play in 42 games on the first team, but the Hawks won the Japan Series and Kawasaki had himself yet another title. Unfortunately, in 2018, Kawasaki's injuries only got worse and he revealed that he had been suffering from an illness to his automatic nervous system, preventing him from ever reaching 100% in health. And that marked the end of his MPB career as he finished with 1,076 hits and 267 stolen bases with a 292, 344, 376 line and 32.9 war through 12 seasons. But in 2019, Kawasaki wasn't ready to retire, so he signed with the Weichuan Dragons of the CPBL and became a player coach. He was unable to participate in any official games, but he got in some exhibition games and even pitched, touching 140 kilometers per hour on the radar gun. In 2020, Kawasaki signed with the Tochigi Golden Braves of the Baseball Challenge League, an independent league in Japan, and on September 13th, he homered on the first pitch he saw in his debut. On April 8th, 2021, he re-signed with the Braves and continues to play as of the recording of this video. He's also started a YouTube channel where he vlogs his everyday activities. So that's the story of a kid from Kagoshima who was inspired by Ichiro to pursue a career in baseball, where he got 8 MPB All-Star selections, won 3 Japan Series titles, 2 WBC gold medals, and a World Series ring. But perhaps most important of all, he passed on Ichiro's legacy of inspiring young players. Sure, Kawasaki was never as good as Ichiro, but there are very few players throughout history who could claim that. That said, Kawasaki definitely had a heart as big as Ichiro and gave fans many wonderful memories, on and off the field. When asked if he is an optimist or pessimist, Kawasaki answered that he is a pessimist, which may come as a surprise to those who witnessed his upbeat personality. 
But when you realize all the hardships Kawasaki went through to get to this point, it begins to make sense. According to Kawasaki, it isn't about whether you're an optimist or pessimist at your core. It's about showing your best self to the world in order to inspire others to be as optimistic as they can. And those are some very wise words to live by. Almost as wise as... Monkeys never collapse. You know, monkey never crap. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more MPB content in English. That's my boy.